Good afternoon, dear friends. I'm Sol from Biological Sciences with Sol Channel. Today I'm with a new video, and this video is chapter 6 of bio, a general biology course. It is about infectious disease and uh, immunity. So, uh, as usual, don't forget to like and uh, share this video, and uh, those of you not yet subscribed, please uh, subscribe my channel. And, uh, let us proceed. This unit 6 or uh, chapter 6 is all about infectious disease and uh, immunity. So let us first define what uh, infectious diseases are. Infectious diseases are diseases caused by infectious agents like bacteria, virus, fungi, protozoa, helminths, and uh, prions. Uh, all infectious diseases begin at external surface and uh, internal surface. External surface such as skin and uh, conjunctiva, internal surface such as mucosal membrane of respiratory tract, uh, intestine or urogenital tract of the host. In order to cause disease or infectious diseases, the pathogen or this uh, infectious agent must accomplish the following steps. For example, it must enter the host, it must metabolize and uh, multiply on or in the host tissue, it must resist the host's uh, defense because the host has its own defense system, it must damage the tissue of the host, this is due to growth of the pathogen in the host, or it may be caused by production of toxic chemicals by the uh, pathogen or there is production of digestive enzymes the, by the pathogen. Therefore, by these mechanisms, the uh, pathogen must damage the tissue of the host. 6.1 Principles of Infectious Disease Infection and uh, Disease These two terms, infection and the disease, have different meanings. For example, infection results when the pathogens enter and begin to grow within the host. Once the pathogens enter and begin to grow within the host, then this is result or this results in infection. However, disease occurs when the cells are damaged, tissue function is impaired due to infection, sign and symptoms uh, of illness appear. Therefore, these two terms have different meanings. Sign, symptom, and uh, syndrome are some uh, illness conditions. Uh, for example, this uh, symptom is a change in body function that is felt by the patient as a result of disease. It is subjective because the person, the patient himself, feels uh, his uh, change in body function. Uh, whereas this sign is a change in body function that can be measured or observed as a result of disease. It is objective. The change is detected by different machines, different devices, so it can be measured or it can be observed. Uh, the other is uh, syndrome. This syndrome is a specific group of signs and symptoms that appear uh, that appear due to uh, a disease. Different diseases may have common sign and uh, symptom. However, if the sign and uh, symptoms are specific for specific disease, this is known as uh, syndrome. Classifying disease. Disease can be communicable disease. A disease that is spread from one host to another is known as communicable disease. The other category is contagious disease. This is a disease, or it is a communicable disease, that is easily spread from one host to another. For example, COVID-19. As you know, COVID-19 can easily transmit it from one uh, host to another. The other category is non-communicable disease. This is a disease that is not transmitted from one host to another, for example, cancer, diabetes, uh, 
uh, blood pressure is like are uh, non-communicable disease. Classifying uh, infectious diseases by occurrence of uh, disease. Uh, so the first is incidence. This incidence refers to the occurrence of new disease in the population over a specified period of time. The other uh, classification is uh, prevalence. This prevalence is portion of a particular population found to be affected by disease at a specific uh, time. This prevalence is equal to number of people in a sample with the disease divided by total number of uh, people or individuals in his, in his sample. So uh, prevalence means it is a ratio of a number of uh, people or individual in the sample with the disease to a total number of people or individual uh, individuals in the sample. Uh, the other is sporadic disease. This sporadic disease is disease that occurs occasionally or irregularly in a population. And the other is uh, endemic disease. This endemic disease is a disease that occurs constantly in the population or it is a disease constantly present in a population. The other is epidemic disease. This is a disease acquired by many hosts in a given area in a short uh, period of time. And the uh, last one is pandemic disease. It is a disease which is found worldwide or it is worldwide epidemic. Severity or duration of infectious disease. The scope of infectious disease can be defined as acute, chronic, or latent. Acute is a disease which develops suddenly and uh, rapidly, which lasts in a short time, often uh, only a few days or weeks. It will uh, develop or it will develop suddenly and uh, rapidly but lasts in short time may take uh, a few days or weeks chronic is a disease which develops gradually and uh, slowly but lasts longer time latent is a disease with a period of no symptom when the collative agent is inactive An infection of infectious diseases can be local infection or systemic infection. In local infection, pathogens are limited to a small area of the body. That means a particular area of the body can be affected by pathogens in local infection. And in systemic infection, an infection throughout the body by uh, bacteria, I mean by the blood or lymphs, because once blood or lymphs are affected by pathogens, they are circulated throughout the body, therefore, the infectious agents can be circulated throughout the body. For example, bacteremia. This bacteremia means bacteria in the uh, blood. Sepsis is toxic inflammatory condition arising from the spread of microbes. And the other is septicemia, that means growth of bacteria in the blood. Toxemia, uh, that means toxic in the blood. Viremia, this virus in the blood. These all are systemic infections. The next point is about disease development stage or disease development period. So uh, there are different states or period of disease development. The first is incubation period. At this time, or it is a time interval between initial infection and the first appearance of sign and uh, symptom. And the second uh, stage is a prodromal period at this time, or it is characterized by appearance of the first mild sign and uh, symptoms. And the period of illness, it is a period or a time uh, where disease at this height or all disease sign symptoms are appeared at this period. Period of decline, uh, where the, I mean, when sign and the symptoms subsided or reduced 
or uh, this sign symptoms are uh, declined. And uh, finally, period of convalescence, where the bo uh, when the body returns to uh, its pre uh, disease state, that means health is restored at this period of time. Or you can see uh, this figure. This is uh, incubation period when the time interval, that means the time interval between initial infection and the first appearance of uh, sign symptom. And uh, this one is a prodromal period, which is characterized by appearance of the first mild sign symptom. This is a period of illness. It is the time uh, or a period where a disease is uh, at its height or all disease signs and symptoms are appear. And this one is a period of decline. It is a time where when the signs and symptoms are subsided or reduced or decline. And finally, period of uh, convalescence. That means the body returns to its pre-diseased state or the health is restored at this period of time. Uh, pathogenicity. What is the meaning of pathogenicity? This pathogenicity is the capacity of an organism to disease. So microorganisms can be classified based on their pathogenicity, means based on their capacity of causing disease into different groups. For example, the first group is primary pathogen. This is microbe or virus that causes disease in health individuals. If the first time health individuals are infected by microbes or virus, these agents can be uh, primary pathogens. Second category, opportunistic pathogen or opportunistic. This uh, is pathogens that causes disease when the body defense mechanism is compromised or weakened. For example, pneumonia occurs when HIV AIDS weaken the immune system. Normal flora or normal microbiota are uh, microbes that are found on the body surface and some can cause disease if they use the immunity compromised. Otherwise, normal flora are normal. They, they, they do not cause disease. If the, our immune system is compromised, they can, some of them may cause disease. The next point is about uh, the spread of infection. Uh, spread of infection, that means infection can be spreaded uh, even uh, by living organisms or it can be spread by non-living uh, things too. So in general, uh, those things that uh, spread these infectious agents are known as reservoir infection. So human can be reservoir infection. Uh, so for example, uh, sick or ill people can be reservoir infection. Carriers, one who are born, this is causing organisms in their body without manifest uh, any symptoms of illness can uh, spread these infectious agents. Latent infectious carriers, that means people or individuals uh, who uh, are during incubation period or who are at convalescent uh, period. This all can be reservoir infections that can spread these infectious agents. The other is zoonosis. The zoonosis is or are diseases that affect wild and uh, domestic animals and uh, can be transmitted to uh, human. So wild and uh, domestic animals can be uh, reservoir infections of these infectious diseases. And the disease that affects these animals is known as zoonosis, so it can be transmitted to human, either by direct contact with the animal or with soil waste, or by eating or drinking these animal products, or it can be transmitted by blood sucking arthropods. And the other reservoir infections are non reservoir infections, which are uh, contaminated soil, contaminated water, and contaminated food can be reservoir infections of diseases because can, these uh, materials can be a carrier of these infectious agents and uh, they can be uh, transmit these agents to humans.
Thank you once again for watching and I will come back soon with another new video. See you.